Welcome back to the channel, where I share tips and tricks on how to get the most out of your media. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up and use LiDAR. LiDAR is a music collection manager for Usenet and BitTorrent users. It can monitor multiple RSS feeds for new albums from your favorite artists and will interface with clients and indexers to grab, sort, and rename them. It can also be configured to automatically upgrade the quality of existing files in the library when a better quality format becomes available. Sound good? Let's get started. All right, here we are at Unraid's main page. To get started, let's go over to apps and search box, search for LIDAR, L-I-D-A-R-R. All the containers I've used in the past have all been bin hex containers, so I'm gonna stick with that. I'm gonna find it in the list here and then click install. So here is bin hex LIDAR, clicking install. All right, the first thing as always is to check to make sure the ports are available. So if we scroll down to the bottom, we wanna expand show Docker allocations. Then I'm gonna press control F on the keyboard and I'm gonna type in this first port number here, 8686. Shows there's two, which are these right here, just to make sure it's not used. Scroll down and it's not listed there, so that one's free to use. There are no other ports listed there, so we can continue on. All right, for host path two, this will be the location of our downloads, which for me, I'm going to back up here, slash MNT slash user, and then downloads. And then for host path three, that is the directory to our music. Once again, I'll click into there. Mine is stored under media and then music. And if you don't have a media share set up, let me show you how to do that real quick. You go up to your shares tab, then you'd click add share, give it a name. I like to have all my media under one folder with subfolders that break it down in each individual category. So for me, I would do something like media, and then you're gonna want it stored on the array. Then you hit add share. I already have a share name media, so I'll just go show you that one. So once again, the share name for me is media. And then for the comments, I have default location for all the media files. You can put it whatever you'd like in there. It's just a basic reminder of what that folder is for. After that part's done, you'd hit apply. Then you'd scroll down and under the SMB security settings, you need to set the export option to yes. Then you hit apply there and then you'd click done. All right, to get it installed, let's go over to apps. In the search box, type in LiDAR. I use bin hex containers, so I'm going to choose bin hex LiDAR and click install. The name is fine. Let's check for available ports. I'm going to highlight that, copy that port number, scroll down, expand to show Docker allocations. I'm going to press Control F for find on my keyboard. Paste that in, and it shows there's two, which are right there. What you're looking for is to make sure that port number is not used for any other Docker containers. And mine's clear, so I'm okay to move forward with that. If you have that same port down below, then just change this number to, let's say, one digit higher. Search for that. And as long as you're clear, you should be good to go. Mine's fine, so I'm going to change it back. 8686. Post path number two is the location of your downloads. So I'm going to remove the app data, click into that field, and then I will select my downloads folder. And host path three is the location of your music. So for me, my music is under slash MNT slash user media and then music. And that's all that's needed there. So go ahead and hit apply. Once the install is finished, go ahead and click done. Now let's jump to the Docker tab. And always the first thing that I do is to turn on the auto start. And while I'm here, I'm going to move the binhex LiDAR container down into the media server folder down here. If you don't have Docker folder set up, go check out my 11 must have plugins for Unraid video. I'll leave a link in the description. If you have Docker folders installed, let me show you how to add this real quick. Go to your media server folder, open that up, scroll to the bottom, find the binhex LiDAR and toggle the slide bar and hit submit. And there it is. All right, from here, I'm going to click on the Binhex LiDAR icon and select Web UI. First thing that it's going to want is to set up a user ID and a password. So let's do that first. The authentication method, I like just to use the basic browser pop-up option. Authentication is required. That is enabled. Username, I'm going to call this demo. And then the password, once again, my super secret password. 
enter, enter that twice, and then press save. There you go, LiDAR is installed. Let's set it up now. Let's go over to settings, and then under media management, first thing we need to do is create a root folder. So click on the plus, I'm gonna name this music. Then for path, let's click on the folder and we're going to select media and then press OK. Next, LiDAR wants to know what you want it to monitor. Your options are all albums, future albums, missing albums, existing ones only, only the first album, only the last album, or none. For me, since this is my demo server, I'm not going to worry about monitoring anything, so I'm going to choose none. And then for monitor new albums, you can either choose all albums, none, or new ones. Choose whichever option works for you. But for me, like I said, for my demo, I don't need any. Quality profile. Under quality profile, you can choose any, lossless, or standard. I'm going to choose standard for me. Metadata profile. I'm just going to go with the standard. And that's all you need to worry about there, so hit save. Under track renaming, I'm going to enable rename tracks. Under colon replacement, the default option is fine for me. Standard track format. Renaming of the tracks will follow the standard track format or the multi-disc format. The defaults are album title, release year, artist name, album title, track number, and the track title, which is fine. If you'd like to change that, you can click on the question mark off to the side. Within there, you can adjust the naming of the files using lots of different criteria. And the different tokens contained in here allow you to name the file pretty much any way you'd like. There's options for file names, for different formats, for the artist name, album names, release dates, mediums, tracks, track titles, artists, quality, lots of options in here. So if you have some way you like your media named, go ahead and select those. And at the very bottom, it shows you the formats that you have selected. Once you're happy with your selections, you can click close. The defaults are fine for me, so I'm going to leave it the way it is. All right, make sure when you're done, you hit save. Now I'm going to jump over to profiles. The default profiles within LiDAR are listed below. There's any, lossless, and standard. If you click on any of those, it'll show you all the options that have been selected. And if you decide that you do not want trash quality lossy files, you just unselect it and then hit save. I'm not going to worry about this, so I'm just going to hit cancel. Same goes for the lossless. If you want to add any other quality formats to that, like let's say you want your lossless quality format to include trash quality. I don't know why you would, but you could. I'm going to cancel that. And then standard. Once again, it just gives you different options to select there. You can also hit the plus and add your own if you'd like. And then under metadata profiles, the same type of thing happens here. You click standard, then you can choose which kind of information you'd like within that profile. For me, all the defaults are fine, so I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Once again, you can also create a new one if you'd like. Select whatever options you'd want. You hit save. All right, I'm going to jump down to quality. Here you can adjust the different quality definitions of each file type. Each one of these options has a slider on them which is easily seen in the very top one, the unknown. The left selection here controls the very first minimum limits. The one on the right controls the maximum. And the one in the center is the desired size. So you can adjust these however you see fit. For me, all the defaults are fine once again, so I just leave it the way it is. But you can adjust it to suit your needs. All right, I'm going to jump down to indexers. And right now, we don't have any indexers in here. I use Prowler for all my indexers, so I'll configure that in a little bit, and that'll take care of all the indexers. All right, download clients. To set that up, go ahead and click on the plus. I've got videos for both Deluge and Qubit Torrent, so if you need help with setting one of those up, I'll leave a link in the description for those as well. But for me, I'm just going to select Deluge, but you can also select Qubit Torrent and use that one as well. For Deluge, click on that one. The name is fine. The host is going to be the IP address of your server. In my case, it was 10.0.11. The port number for my setup is the default 8112, so that is good. The password is the password that you have set within Deluge. Let's go ahead and type that in. Category will be LiDAR, that is good. The recent priority and the older priority, both are fine there. We don't need to add a pause, so we'll leave that unselected. And then when it's done, we want it to remove the imported downloads from the download client history. We want that selected. All right, go ahead and hit test. If you have a green check mark, it's communicating great, so go ahead and hit save. If not, double check the host and the port and then the password. Mine's good, so I'll hit save. And that's set up. 
All right, now I'll show you how to set up the Qubit Torrent. Click on the plus, find the Qubit Torrent option, select that. The name is fine. Once again, the host is going to be the IP address for the server. In my case is 10.0.11. The default port 8080 should be fine. If you've changed yours to something else, then make sure that you put your port number in there. Enter the username for your container, which I think mine was demo, and then my super secret password. Category LiDAR is great. Priorities are fine. Initial state, we want it to start. The rest of the defaults are fine, so go ahead and go ahead and hit test. Green check mark means everything's fine. Go ahead and hit save. If yours fails for some reason, it's most likely the username or the password, but it could be the host or the port. Once yours is good, hit save. All right, next option is connect. And then for connections, I'm gonna hit the plus here and add in our Plex Media Server. So the options here will notify Plex if anything's changed in the library and any of these below triggers. The defaults are all fine, so I'm gonna go ahead and just scroll down, put in the host here for our Plex server, which mine is 10.0.0.11. Default port is 32400, and that is correct for me. And I'm gonna hit test. Oh, I have to hit authenticate with Plex TV first. Signing in. All right, now I hit test. Green check mark, we're good. Hit save. All right, metadata. Here, LiDAR allows you to write metadata to the auto files if you'd like. The default is never, but you can select all files, keep in sync with media brains, all files on the initial import only, or only for new downloaded files. Never is fine since this is just a demo server for me anyhow. And then scrub existing tags allows you to remove all the metadata tags from all the files. If you want to start with a clean slate, go ahead and select that option and it'll wipe everything out. Then you can add all the fresh metadata from there. The defaults are fine for me, so I'm just going to skip over that. Down to general. In the beginning, when we first signed in, LiDAR wanted us to create a username and a password. And that information is stored here. If you need to change that, you can change the username down below here. And then the password is listed there. And then, of course, confirm the password again. We're going to need this API key for Prowler. So go ahead and copy that. And then click Save Changes. All right, down to UI. This is for the user interface. If you'd like to change the layout a little bit, like the calendar view, you can have the first day of the week be a Monday or a Sunday. We'll start with a Sunday. The date and time formats can be set to your liking here. Under style, you can set the default theme for it. My system defaults to dark, so I'm just going to leave it on auto, but you can change it to light or dark or whatever you'd like. If you're a color impaired user, it'll change the color theme a little bit and make it easier on you. And if English is not your desired language, you can change that at the very bottom. All right, once you're done there, go ahead and hit save. All right, let's jump over to Prowler and set up the indexers. Go back to your Unraid server, find Prowler, click the icon, go to the web UI. And from here, we're going to go to settings, apps, and then we're going to click on the plus to add a new one in. Find LiDAR. The name is fine. You want it full sync. That means it goes back and forth both ways. The Prowler server will be your server IP address listed here. Mine is 10.0.0.11, followed by the port number. And the LiDAR server is the one we just set up, which is again on the server IP address with the port number that you had assigned to it. API key, go ahead and paste that in. Press test. Green check mark means everything's good. Go ahead and hit save. Now if we jump back to LiDAR and we go to the indexers, You'll see that it's pulled it in already. The more indexers you have in Prowler, the more that it will show up within LiDAR. All right, now let's get our MIDI into LiDAR. Go up to library. And the first time in here, since we have no data in here yet, you can either add a root folder or you can add a new artist. All right, so under library, your media should show up here automatically. If not, go ahead and hit update all. Each artist will be listed here. To find out more information about each artist, go ahead and click on the one you'd like. It'll give you a little synopsis of the artist. What are you doing? And there you'll have the artist name, the monitor flag, whether you want it to be monitored or not, the genre that it's under, the media location, total file size, what media format you'd like, whether it's monitored or unmonitored, if it's a continuing artist or not, a brief synopsis of that artist. Down below you'll have the albums. You can click on the drop down arrow to get more information. You can see here I've got three different albums from Blackmail. If you select one of them, it'll go into that, shows you the cover art, 
all the track titles, the duration, audio file information, and then status. If you know your media is not named properly, you can go up to preview rename. There it'll give you the list of the files that you have. And below each one, it'll show you the format that it's going to rename it to. These are all named properly, so there's nothing here for me, so I can hit cancel. If you have items that need renamed, you'd hit organize. Go back to your library. And this artist, The Civil Wars, got four albums and a single. I'll expand one of those. And you see it has the same information. If you want to adjust the settings for each individual artist, you can go ahead and click on the wrench there, and it'll give you the option to monitor that album, all albums, new ones, whatever you'd like, quality profiles if you want it to be lossless or any profile. You can change each individual artist there. If you'd like to add an artist, you click Add New, type in the name you're looking for. Let's look for Pink Floyd. Then you'd select the artist. After selecting the artist, you'd choose which options you would like. The folder you'd like it to go to, and here you'd select the monitor status for each type, and then the quality profile as well. Then you just simply click Add. Now if you go back to your library, you'll see it's listed there. Since this is just for informational purposes, I don't want it to actually download anything. So I'm going to turn this to None. And then under Unmapped Files, it'll show you any files that it's found, but it hasn't matched up with an artist yet. So you'd look through your list here, find one that you'd like to manually import, in this case, let's go to the Civil Wars here since it's just this one that's not matched up. You select it, click the little person icon on the right hand side. It's going to attempt to look for it and to match it up. If it's not able to, then you can manually select what you'd like. There you go. LiDAR's done a pretty good job. It's matched up the artist name and the album name, but it's having some trouble on all the uh, individual tracks. So for the ones that are missing track numbers, you can just select the red box there and select the actual track that it belongs to. There's a few that are missing some information, but I've noticed that they're duplicates. So if you have any unmapped files, go ahead and select one that you'd like to manually map. In this case, I'm just going to select the top option here. And then on the right, click on the little person icon. LiDAR will go through and match it up to any artist that it thinks it is. In this case, it's found all the album, but hasn't matched up any artist. So to do that manually, you'd select you select each track, or you can just select the entire list right there. And then click in one of the red boxes. Select the artist. And then you select any other missing information, such as the album or the track number. And after you're done with your selections and you have everything matched up, you'd hit import. Since these are all singles, I'm not going to bother trying to match all that up right now, so I'll just hit cancel. Over on the left, you'll find calendar. And on calendar, on the right hand side, you've got different calendar views. I'll select month. If there's any upcoming concert information for an artist that you have in your library, it would show up in the calendar here. Over to activity. This will show you the activity of anything that's going on within your library. If you've got anything queued up, the history of anything that's happened on the server, or anything that you've got in the block list. And under wanted, It'll show you a list of artists and albums that you have on your monitored list. And the last option is under System. Under Status, it'll show you the health of your LiDAR container. In this case, I have an error here because it's unable to talk with Deluge. It's because I've turned that container off. It shows you some information about the disk space, the location of your media folders, and how much space is available. And under About, you can find the version number of the LiDAR container that you have currently installed. There we go. We got LiDAR installed and set up. If you want to learn more about Deluge VPN or Qubit Torrent VPN, check out one of these two videos. But before you go, if you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos. I'll see you in the next one.